Um, when looking at this, what you guys missed last class period is what we call a central angle. A central angle was when you had an angle that had a vertex at the center. Okay, When you had a vertex at the center and you had two endpoints on there, which we'll call M and N. All right. Now, what was important about this, Kaylee, was we noticed that the arc M, N, was equal to the measure of x degrees. This is what we called a central angle. Wow. All right? Thank you. Kaylee? <laughs> Thank you. So now what we're going to be talking about is a new central angle. So I wanted to make sure, Kaylee, I went over that for the people that missed last class period so then they can move from what is a central angle to now what is we're going to call an inscribed angle. Yes. Now, when talking about an inscribed angle, the definition of an inscribed angle and how it differs from central angle is an inscribed angle is going to still have two endpoints on your, circ on your circle. However, rather than having the vertex at the center, you're now going to have a vertex on the circle as well as the two endpoints. All right. Now, this is going to create some different measurements. We understood that a central angle, the measure of the arc of the central angle was equal to that angle. right? However, when I'm looking at x degrees for an inscribed angle, the measure of angle x is equal to 1, um, one half the measure of my arc mn. Alex, let's call this, let's do a different value. Let's do this y. OK, it's actually one half of the measurement. So let's look at this. If here is m to n, this measurement is x. Now, the inscribed angle is one half of that value. OK, so let's put it into perspective. Let's say this is 70 degrees. And I say, well, then what is this measurement? If that's 70 degrees, then here's the central angle. Now the measure of the inscribed angle would be 35. Does that make sense of what the definition of an inscribed angle is? Yes. Okay. 